fugly saw is off and uh, running. It started its new life. I'm going to get it back in a week or so so I can do a follow-up video. Uh, in the meantime, my next 372 project is going to require a um, clutch cover and a pull start and possibly ignition. So while those parts are in transit, I have another project saw. Another fugly, but mainly stock. And this is a Husqvarna 455 Rancher. Its problem is that it apparently doesn't oil. And I think the other problem is it's just freaking dirty. Oh my God. Came from the same place. So uh, I think what we're going to do as a project today is to uh, clean this thing up and get it running first. Um, of course, the first hurdle to getting the, uh, the oiler out is taking off the clutch. So I had to make a tool. I've got my box of uh, spare sockets and I just took a junker out and put a file to it and a grinder to it so it would sit right down inside there and then I can put an air wrench to that. I think this is again the Farmer Meets Broken Saw series as compared to aftermarket series. <laughs> Ugly, but just using that uh, butterfly air wrench it came pretty much right off. I didn't have to put a piston stop in there and risk uh, damaging the piston. Since I think this is going to be an official hilltop saw shop project, it rates a box. Put all the parts and stuff in so I don't lose things. Special tool and all. You know, I've had this darn thing for probably 30 years, but before I go start blowing air at it and spraying at it and dunk it in the parts cleaner and just have all this wood chips plug up my filters. Try to take as much uh, of the uh, crud off as I can with one of these. And since it's really cold in the shop, it's about five degrees before I turn the heater on. The stuff comes off pretty quick. You know, it does make me a little nervous when I don't see a lot of oil. This has been pretty dry, you know. Hmm. I know there is a problem with these with their screens. And I got one of those for the oil pickup tube. And I've heard others that had stripped uh, worm gears. And, uh, well, that's what we're going to find out. So I guess really the theme of this video is uh, 455 and it doesn't oil. What the hell do I do? And I'm a farmer with brass hammers. Well, my first fear is a non-issue. There's that screw you have to uh, pick out of there. On that cover and then you have to wind this out in order to get it out and it looks fine sometimes they're gone but that looks fine to me so I guess that's a big woof to start with and there's the oil pump and I mean that looks like it's turning so far so good So far, so good. So I think we're going to pull that right out, clean it out first and pull that right out and see what we have. I see there's a the delivery mechanism right there. I mean, that, that turns fine. That's good news. There's the delivery mechanism. I don't know what you call that. So I guess we'll clean that up and pull it right out and see what we have. You see that uh, tube down in there? That's the pickup tube. Let's see if I can get a better picture of it. Yeah, it's right there. Well, I guess the wrap is on some of these saws that that pickup tube. Yeah, right there. That's the pickup tube right there. Well, the wrap is that that plastic filter on the end has uh, screen size is too big and the fix is 
to snap this little sucker over the top so that it can block you know debris from getting into the system and clogging up the system um ha, that's going to take a little bit of uh finesse and the oil line comes out right there now i've cleared it out with air and it's clear now i don't believe it was i believe it, in fact it was clogged i've got to figure out how to put that screen on that inside pickup tube the other thing is uh on these pumps they're clever little guys i don't see if you can i don't know if you can see how this works but basically that the end of that uh gear there it's kind of an eccentric and as it turns against the adjusting screw right here which is right here um, what it does is it actually goes in and out and there's a piston in there which pumps the oil to the bar it's all very 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 small and I can tell you right now that it wouldn't take much to plug these things right up so I think that's kind of an interesting device actually it's the same kind of a deal that uh, the 61 through 272s have to where at the end they have a asymmetric cut on the end of that little gear and as it goes back and forth it r rides on the adjuster and goes in and out and pumps the oil so I guess modus operandi here is to clean this all up um, clear out this as well you know I think there was some debris in this as well so the whole system had stuff in it um, try to see if I can get down in there with uh, these things I got a couple of those. See if I can snap that right on there and uh, put the saw back together and see if it oils. So this was quick. Uh, put that little screen on the oil line. Actually, my OCD wife did because she can see and I can't. Put it right back together, fired it right up, and uh, it oils. I, that's what happened. I blew it out with air and, and chips came out of those lines. So. It would have oiled without the new filter, but the new little cap or filter that goes on that oil pickup tube um, should keep some of those particles out and keep it oiling good. So let me fire it up and you can watch the oil come out the hole. Yeah, this poor saw can use a bath. I'm gonna clean it up and put it in the farm service because I kind of missed one I had. It was really kind of a cool on the tractor saw. I'll have to go find a barn chain for it, but I think we're gonna put this one back in service. How about a prettier cover? Maybe that'll make it feel better. But anyway, I gotta clean this mess up. This thing's a mess. These saws get a lot of crap because they're homeowner saws, but you know something? For what they are, they work pretty well. And just like this one, how many years it sat? I don't know. <laughs> the guy gave up on it because it wouldn't oil. Fired right up. Put gas in it, pumped that little uh, primer, and off it went. Yeah, it's probably about 10 degrees in here, so that's actually quite a feat. Last but not least, well, almost last, I'm going to put it together and fire it up and let it idle for a little bit, but I use this uh, brand. It's a lower viscosity uh, oil, so when we're below uh, freezing, you know, winter type conditions, especially again, like I was saying before, with, with the pumps that are a little bit on the weak side, having that lower viscosity lets it put more volume out to the bar course in the summertime it just pumps out but that's when you go back to a standard bar and chain uh, lube but for the winter time trust me it's worth finding something like this
Well, a couple of parts came in today so I can complete the 455. And actually, this is a bit of a surprise. Got this from the local uh, Husqvarna dealer for like $28. And with these rings, I can change this from a 3 8 to, you know, the smaller chain if I chose to. I'm not going to. But it gives you flexibility. And plus, it's a lot cheaper to replace these than the entire uh, clutch spur like the stock one was. So that's a that's a uh, an upgrade and I'm quite pleased. And of course, you know, aftermarket bar. I'm gonna go with the uh, Forester 16 because they're not the most powerful saws in the world and I wanted to cut a little bit of weight out of it. Not sure if I'm gonna keep this saw or is it gonna be sold. That's That's to be determined. But I set it up for me, and that would be uh, based on the power it has and the weight it has. 16 inch bar. Here's the oil. So why is that saw on this table? That's because I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, make a, well, an opinion. I think the 455 Husqvarna might be the uh, equivalent of the Homolite XL and Super XL of their time. And what I mean by that is, and this is going to create some controversy because there's a bunch of guys who just really don't like the homeowner grade Husqvarna's and stuff. This saw fired right off when I got it and it was in pretty bad condition. A couple of pulls and it was running. And those home lights are the same kind of thing where they're just very, very reliable. And it was kind of the go-to saw for the firewood guy, homeowner, you know, not quite a pro. Good solid saws, not the lightest, not the most powerful, but just very, very reliable. And the 455 has been that for me. This is my second. The first one I had, I had for quite a while. Um, a funny story, but uh, that's for another time. And it was a saw that would start on a cold day, and I mean a single-digit cold day cut wood, put it away, do nothing to it, pull it out a few months later and fire it right off. And this one, true to the, uh, the breed, um, they had given up on it because it wasn't oiling for them and I told you why. And sat for a while and uh, fired right off. I mean, I put some gas in it and pumped those little primers a little bit and the damn thing lit right off. So. Um, is it a pro saw? No, it's too heavy for the power and doesn't make enough power anyway But for a homeowner, you know farmer Bang around the back of a truck type of saw Hard to beat this for the money get them used for 200 250 bucks and uh, They don't have a reliability problem that I know of um, But for a homeowner saw a landowner uh, Not the pro I mean, I guess you could but it's just a lot of better options for the average person, it's real hard to beat these. And I think the one feature, well, two features, which uh, I point to to support my argument is how easy it is to start these damn things. Just easy to start. And they have enough power to do what a lot of firewood guys would do. Just like that did in its day. So that's why I say the 455 Husqvarna just might be the equivalent of a home light XL to what it was in its day 
flame away. <laughs> it's just my opinion based on my own personal experience. I've had them both for years.